everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lucy and I'm thrilled to be starting this A Court of Silver Flames reading vlog. So my copy has just arrived and by that I mean this morning it arrived on my Kindle. It is publication day today and I'm currently on my lunch break. It is a Tuesday so I'm at work and my physical copy isn't going to arrive for another week I think. Basically I ordered the tour exclusive so I think it's being shipped out this week sometime and it is the UK event on Saturday. So I have started reading A Court of Silver Flames and I'm 2% in on the Kindle version. I have, like I do remember reading this beginning chapter because I'm pretty sure it got released beforehand. So I do remember reading this before but it is so nice being back in the world of A Court of Thorns and Roses and Sarah J Mass's Worlds. I'm just like really, really excited about this book. As a lot of you guys might know, it is one of my most anticipated books of 2021. And I just wanted to check in, say hi, say that I'm reading this and will be reading this for the majority of this week. So I'm very excited to bring you guys along for the ride. I'm very ready to have my heart broken and destroyed by this book. But equally, I'm hoping that it will just be just all the feels. It's a book about Nesta and Cassian from A Court of Thorns and Roses, so there's going to be some drama along the way. Um, anyway, I'm just about to eat my lunch, which is this rather hugely stacked halloumi bagel, and I'm going to read some pages of A Court of Silver Flames. I'll probably check in with you guys later tonight once I have finished work and can get the bulk of my reading done. Um, but I just wanted to check in and say I am so excited and I, yeah, this is exactly, I'm just thrilled. Hi everyone, it's a bit later on in the evening and I have been reading A Court of Silver Flames as much as I could this evening. I actually had to upload a reading vlog tonight and I had to do the thumbnail and then it literally took hours to upload and it just wouldn't upload which drove me crazy but I have eventually managed to get to the 10% mark of A Court of Silver Flames. What I am realising is this book is huge. I think it's over 700 pages which don't get me wrong I'm very very happy about. It's confusing me in that we are literally straight in on the action. So the kind of initial premise is that Nesta um, has been offered a choice by Feyre either train with Cassian and you know have a job essentially and live in the house of wind the palace of wind house of wind or she goes back to the human realms which she doesn't want to do so I'm going to try not to give massive spoilers in this reading vlog but I will leave timestamps down below I will be doing a spoiler section at the end of this video where I will review the book so do check out the timestamps in the description bar for when to avoid the spoiler section I will let you guys know but anyway what is very very clear is that I kind of forgot like how like like screwed up Nesta was and it becomes very apparent in A Court Frost and Starlight which is the kind of book that bridges Feyre's trilogy and Nesta's book and you kind of forget how like depressed Nesta is like after the events of the war and honestly the initial thoughts of A Court Silver Flames is that Feyre is a bit of a bitch and I don't know why I am not enjoying Feyre at all in this book. I wonder if it is because, you know, it is kind of told from, not told from Nesta's point of view because it's told in the third person, so there is a bit of distance from her kind of perspective, but I just find Feyre's actions a bit like hard to stomach and how her and Reese are reacting, I'm just not finding like appealing anymore. Which is strange because I literally swooned over them and loved Feyre throughout the initial trilogy of A Court of Thorns and Roses. But for some reason, like, I can see why Nesta is getting very annoyed at her because, like, Feyre is kind of acting very high and mighty at the minute and, like, basically saying to Nesta, like, you're living your life wrong, this is how I want you to live your life. And I know she's only doing that because Nesta is destroying her life. And Feyre obviously cares for her and wants her to not destroy herself. But like also let the girl like grieve. Like 
you know, everyone is kind of judging Nesta for kind of drinking, living in squalor, like, and like sleeping around and stuff. But honestly, after all that she's been through, like, maybe that's just how she's dealing with things. Um, so I'm finding it a bit like, I don't know, I'm definitely team Nesta in this instance. Like, I feel her hatred and I can understand why she is so against the Night Court and the inner circle because like they're all just being really kind of stuck up and a bit pompous you know so initial thoughts are nessa's voice and uh, i just love her overall kind of tone and her kind of sassy retorts like she is just a force to be reckoned with and i'm loving that i'm also loving how cassian is just so kind of like goading with her like he is very like you know teasing her essentially and we're only 10 percent of the way in but there's already so much kind of banter and like sexual tension and i just want them to just get together you know but this is like the crazy thing we're 10 percent the way in the first training um kind of scene is about to happen Cassian has just made her for has just force fed her some scrambled eggs and we still got 90% of the book to go and it's making me think shit's gonna go down in this book like you know all the kind of events that were left off towards the end of A Court of Wings and Ruin like it's gonna go down like the human queens something's gonna happen with that oh, I don't know so hi everyone, it is the next day and literally the moment I finish work today I have just been reading A Court of Silver Flames and this is the exclusive tour edition that has just arrived and it's really gorgeous. I mean I kind of wish that I got the Waterstones signed exclusive edition as well because for some reason I thought this was signed and it's not. It's an unsigned exclusive edition but now i kind of want the kind of main jacket even though it's not my favorite i kind of want the main book so i might just have to buy like a plain normal edition i don't know anyway i was reading on my kindle until my kindle died and then i crossed over to the physical book so i'm on page 165 of this and I am already so so invested like I am already in the story so so much I'm not going to elaborate hugely on what I said yesterday because I think all of my initial thoughts are still very like correct like you know the story is still developing but there is a big kind of I wouldn't say twist but the plot of um, the more kind of like political side of where the story is going to go is currently being explored and it's all going down. I'm quite surprised by how much the kind of breadcrumbs left in the final book um, of the Court of Thorns and Roses series, A Court of Wings and Ruin. I'm quite surprised by how much of that is kind of still being explored in this book so the kind of um dynamic with the human queens i would say i'm a quarter of the way through this now and i can say i know a lot of stuff is gonna go down and part of me is not prepared so there you go i am going to go to bed now it is like half 10 and i'm exhausted literally i don't know what it is today but i'm feeling a bit like just drained so i'm gonna go to bed and it's my final day at work tomorrow as i have booked a long weekend and i'm very excited to just read a court silver flames for the next few days hi everyone so it's been a day or two since i've last checked in it's just been busy 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 it's basically friday now and i've had today off the first thing i had to do was get my covid vaccine so i've had my first covid vaccine very exciting um and then i've just been doing admin -y bits i have filmed two videos for my channel and now i need to put away all of these which i filmed with and it's time to read some a court of frost and star no it's not a court of frost and starlight what am i doing is a court of silver flames 
I didn't read any of this yesterday, which is why I didn't really want to do an update. I'm on page 165, which the progress going through this book is not great. Like I'm very, very slow at reading at the minute, which I'm not very pleased about, but I am just going to read for the rest of the day now. And I'm really, really excited about that. My goal would be to finish this book and finish this vlog tomorrow evening so that I have basically two days to read this book in. The only plans I have tomorrow, which is Saturday, are to go on a walk with my friend. So I'm very, very excited to just like bunker down for the rest of the afternoon, get a blanket, get a cup of tea and read some Silver Flames. And I am buzzed about that. I must say I am loving it so far and I feel like I'm not properly in the action enough, but a lot is happening. We've got our main plot coming together, I think. And it's also super nice being able just to see like all the characters we know and love from the first three books in the series, like more Amren's in the book a lot. Um, there's not as much Asriel in the pages I've read so far as I would like. And there's no Elaine. We've not even seen Elaine yet. I've just realized. So I'm looking forward to all that to come later on in the book. I hope there is a lovely moment with like Feyre, Nesta and Elaine just like I hope they all just become friends you know I'm just sad that there is just such like um you know like Nesta and Feyre just hate each other basically which is not fun so I'm looking forward to some character growth on Nesta's part in this and I'm looking forward to like some good scenes with Feyre because the scenes I've read with Feyre so far I'm not loving her and I think I mentioned this before Feyre's character is like starting to grate on me a little bit and I don't really know why. So anyway, it's time to read more pages because we need to know what happens. I want to get to a scene where Nesta and Cassian just get close. <laughs> evening and I'm actually just about to take a bath. I've switched over to read on my Kindle because obviously I don't want to bring my massive Tor edition hardback into the bath and potentially ruin it. But I'm on page 273 of Silver Flames and loving this book so so much. There is so much going on and Nesta, my poor precious Nesta, is just, like, her journey is incredible. Also, the scenes with Cassian are killing me right now. Let's just say it's picked up a lot, and this is a very spicy book. I am loving it. It is just everything I wanted. Um, wow. I must say, I didn't expect um, the steamier elements to happen as early on as they have. I thought it would be a bit more slow burn than that, but it is not slow burn. We're just, you know, going all in there with the flame emoji. But I think this probably is done purposefully because physical intimacy, like, I don't think is an issue for Nesta. It's more the emotional, like, intimacy for Nesta, I think is the problem and what she, you know, isn't used to and is basically closing off. So I'm really interested to see where this book is going to go. This isn't really a spoiler, but I love that the House of Wind is like this sentient being that Nesta becomes friends with. It is bizarre, but I love it. I just like, it's so comforting how it kind of like looks after her. I just, I love it guys. I love, love, love this book. I am a bit terrified though, because it's all very like lovely. And even though there is like some dread in the book so far like there is um we have found out a bit more about the kind of conflict element of the plot it is serious conflict like 
it, it's very doom and gloom. And I'm very aware that I'm only 38% the way through the book and we've not really hit any conflict yet, like proper conflict. So I'm a bit nervous about that. So I'll probably leave this vlog for tonight. I'll check in tomorrow once I've had a chance to hopefully finish this book off. But I would love to, I don't know, get to the 50% mark of the book tonight, see if I can do it, and then try and read the rest tomorrow. I realise that's going to be super ambitious, um, but we will see what happens. Hi everyone, it is Saturday evening. I am on 64% of A Court of Silver Flames. <sighs> this book is blowing my mind. Obviously this is the non-spoiler section of this video. So I will go into full spoiler detail at the end of this video when I do my proper review. All I can say is this might be my favourite Sarah J Maas book ever. Oh my god, I'm in love with Nesta, I'm in love with Cassian. I just feel like I think the pacing is really good. I'm like really enjoying the pacing. I think I'm 64% the way in. I know like everything is going to just go downhill from here. Like I can sense we're in the latter third of the book and I just feel like it's all just gonna go tits up. I feel like everything's gonna go wrong in a few pages time. And all I want to do is for Nesta to just be a badass bitch and save the day. And I know she is gonna be. Um, I'm a little bit terrified that Nesta is this like all powerful being. And obviously that's hinted at the end of um, A Court of Wings and Ruin, but she is like crazy powerful. And I'm not gonna go into what her power is, mainly because we don't really know what it is. Like, you know, there's that kind of, um, you know, it's said in the other books that she has basically clawed something away from the cauldron to, you know as revenge and she's taken something from the cauldron and the fact that she's like this being that the cauldron obviously made and now that she is just like this badass amazing powerful person is incredible so i am loving this book so much i really want to finish this tonight i don't know if i can it might be a one that i finish tomorrow morning um i also have sarah's event tonight digital uk event which will be super exciting um i'm really looking forward to hearing her talk about writing this book because i think it's like it feels very different to the other books um there's also a plot point happening with Feyre. i'm not going to go into what it is because it is a slight spoiler but her plot in this book um, her kind of story arc is really interesting and I just need to know what happens and I don't know how we're going to finish all that off with like less than 40% of the book to go. It'll be interesting but anyway I'm also loving the kind of newfound friends that Nesta has found. I think they're really great characters that kind of give Nesta something to like bounce off and let's just say Nesta and Cassian I'm glad this book is not marketed as YA. Like, you know, the Accord of Thorns and Roses, the first three books, let's just say those weren't really YA either. They were quite steamy in places. And honestly, I'm very, very, I think Sarah J Maas is aware that that's where she wanted her writing to head. She kind of, I know that Sarah is a huge um, romance fan as am I, I'm, I'm a big, big romance reader. So you can tell that there's a lot of romance influences in Silver Flames. Even Nesta is obsessed with romances. I'm like, my girl recommending romances to Gwyn and Emery, basically like forming a romance book club up in here, loving it. Um, So I think Sarah is aware that like romance novels and the romance writing tradition. And I think that has kind of influenced some of this novel as well and she kind of wanted to make it spicy it is spicier than some of the spicy romances i've read like it is it is spicy and i'm glad that you know sarah's just embraced that and kind of was like you know what i'm going all in literally um so it's yeah it's a really really fun read and i'm just like shocked at how there are so many like sexy scenes and it's like you know a super hot book but also it's not about that like she packs so much plot around that and 
each of those scenes are so different and I feel like are needed. So it's a really interesting dynamic between a romance book and a crazy, amazing fantasy book. She's still a badass. She's still a badass. Yeah, 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 I watched Sarah's amazing UK event and it kind of like brought a new level of understanding around um, A Court of Silver Flames or ACUS <laughs> as Sarah called it. I can't remember how she like pronounced the acronym. Um, but yeah, like especially around how this apparently is one of her most personal books yet and kind of symbolized Sarah's own kind of overcoming of a trauma that she experienced um yeah kind of gave the book a new significance to me and basically I'm a hundred pages away from the end and I usually like have to go to bed before 12 because I am a massive wimp and well not a wimp I'm just like a very tired person and if I don't get like my full eight hours of beauty sleep I am a mess but I've decided to stay up because I've got 100 pages left. I think I can finish this in the next hour. Like ideally I wanna finish this before 12 so that I can review this for you guys. Um, I just know that if I like just go to sleep now and um, like read this tomorrow, I also have to kind of like I want to get this video up tomorrow so I'm kind of rush not rushing but I'm trying to force myself to stay up and finish it for the sake of this vlog so um yeah in terms of the progress so far I am on the fourth and final part of the book so it's divided up into different parts and it's interesting because I'm now realizing that where I thought the book was heading is not where the book is heading I don't know if that makes it a little bit disappointing for me, but I did tell you guys that part of the plot that is left off at the end of A Court of Wings and Ruin is about the human queens and, you know, that plot line is still kind of woven into this book. And I thought that was a plot line that was going to get picked up in this book and get concluded in this book. There's not enough of the book left for it to kind of get concluded. So, um, Anyway, I'm going to try and finish Silver Flames tonight and as soon as I've finished, I will be on this camera with my review and it will be spoiler filled. So I might have a few minutes before it starts where I do a non-spoiler review, just like a non-spoiler recap of this book. Why, if you've not read it, I think you should read it, but do stay tuned for that. Um, so wish me luck for this last hour. I'm going to try and finish A Court of Silver Flames. But the consensus so far is this is one of my favorite Sarah J Maas books ever. Nesta is a goddess and we stan Nesta, like. <laughs> everyone it is 10 past midnight and i have just finished a quarter silver flames um yeah all the emotions so i am going to um do a quick few words of non-spoiler review now that i've finished this um honestly i think this might be one of sarah jo Mass's, like best books that she's written in terms of like how complete it is in its own kind of um entity for some reason i thought that there would be more nesta and cassian books after this but in sergio Maz's event that i watched tonight she basically confirmed that each of the new books in the series would be a different character 
So that's really interesting. And I think that was the right decision to make. But anyway, this book was an emotional roller coaster. Like you were with Nesta on every single step of the way. I'm not going to go into any spoilers. That's for the next section. But let's just say that this book was just a complete, I don't know, like journey into someone who is just struggling and how they managed to build themselves back up again and I think one of the best things about this book obviously it is a romance like you know you know from the offset that Nessian and Nessian oh my god you know from the offset that Nesta and Cassian are supposed to be together like that's kind of been set up from the first you know the initial trilogy however what you don't expect is the kind of friendship element that really comes into play here and I'm not kind of going to go into what the specifics of that looks like and who Nesta is very close friends with but these two ladies that Sarah J Maz introduces into the book are incredible and I'm kind of loving the idea of like this found family and that is something that Sarah J Maz really kind of brings into the book and really kind of plays with and just makes it so beautiful. So yes I did say that this is I think one of my favourites. I think it might be second to A Court of Mist and Fury for me just in terms of like how well written this was and let me just warn you guys like this is a spicy book like oh my god it is like perhaps the most explicit book Sarah J Maas has written to date although she has hinted that Crescent City 2 is going to be even kind of filthier but I think it's also like each of those scenes is also a character development opportunity for Nesta and Cassian so I think it yes it is quite a saucy book but also like it's not without reason like I think all of those moments are very carefully plotted and yeah I just thought that there isn't like any part of this book that could have been left out and especially because it's over 700 pages long I think it was very very well paced I mean I actually read half of this book today that is you know ridiculous that's like over 350 pages and not one of those pages dragged for me which I think is a very, very good sign of a well-written, well-paced book if like not one of those pages is dragging. And I have a bad tendency of kind of skim reading the ends of books because I just want to rush and find out what happens. And let me just say like I didn't do that. Like I found that every single word, every paragraph, I was really kind of like just marvelling over because they were so well-written and some passages were absolutely beautiful, which I will go into in the spoiler section. But to round this off very, very quickly, I am going to put it out on a limb and say this might be Sarah's best written book to date. Ness's character development was beautiful. You really go on a journey with her. And it's kind of tricky because, like, I can only compare it to what Feyre goes through in the second book, A Court of Mist and Fury, which was also, you know, is my favourite Sarah J Maas book. And I think, like, Sarah just has a way of kind of really like doing justice to these characters like sufferings and not making a quick job out of repairing them if that makes sense and I think what Nesta goes through is you know an extremely painful recovery process and I think it's just done so so well but there's also so much humour and I think that is what makes this book so special is there's so much warmth and humour and just like hope on every page. So that was my spoiler free review. So if you have not yet read this book and you don't want to be spoiled then just skip this next part of the video or you can click off it although that wouldn't be good for my audience retention rate so keep watching but on mute. Anyway spoilers. Um, so a lot to unpack especially towards the end of the book first things first I am um, I don't know how to feel about the fact that Nesta's power her like earth-shattering power like death itself has just been like she gave that up and 
part of me was like, you know what? She did it obviously for her sister. She did it to save Feyre and that is incredible. But equally, I'm like, I kind of like the idea of Nesta just being this like, like unstoppable, you know, able to freaking defeat immortal like demons. Like that's how strong she is. And it just all kind of like, she gave that up to save Feyre's life, which was such an emotional scene and just the idea of like Feyre dying and her like baby dying and then Reese also had the bloody bond that he would die too it was just too much so I'm glad that Nesta prevented that I don't think I could have taken it if all you know if they just died um the whole blood right bit was incredible as well because I love that Nesta sacrificed herself so that Gwyn and I can never remember the other girl's name. Uh, what is her name? Emery. So that they could um, touch the stone and complete the blood rite. And I love that she kind of sacrificed herself so that she could do that. The whole scene when Cassian stabbed himself in the heart, like, oh my God. I was just like, this is not, this is not where we're going, Sarah Jo Mads. We do not want to go here. Um, but then how she basically unmade, um, what's the queen called? Bryolin. When she unmade Bryolin and just like the pure power of that scene, I was like literally cheering on Nesta. I was like, she is my queen. I love her. Basically, I mentioned in an earlier clip, I think it was the like vlog clip just before I'm filming this, that um, I thought the book was diverting us on a different path so basically the whole situation with the queens about brylin with the um the trove i thought that that was all going to be wrapped up in this book but then when the last quarter of the book turned into the blood right i was like how are we gonna like how are we gonna round off the brylin plot line but then it was just so perfectly interwoven how brylin had basically tricked Bellius, had got him, gotten him all like influenced with the crown and had been plotting this all along and oh my god the whole situation was mind-blowing like how well plotted that whole scene was was incredible and I am shook also the whole mate situation so i had my suspicions from the get-go that sarah j maz would make cassian and nesta mates because they were so obsessed with each other from like the original book so i was like i know this is going to happen but i wonder if like i can't remember if this is explained in all the other books but i'm pretty sure finding your mate is like really rare so it's like, what are the chances that like Reese has found his mate in Feyre, Cassian has found his mate in Nesta? Like, it makes me wonder, like with Elaine, like surely Elaine is going to get her own book. Like, who is her mate going to be? Because surely she would know by now if it was like Asriel or if it was Lucian. And I don't know if it's either of those people. So I've kind of got suspicions about the like next books in the series and who they're going to tackle. Pretty sure Maul will get her own book because you know more's like plot line needs to be i don't know she needs some happiness in her life more um i'm trying to think what else like really shook me i think oh especially the whole journey so sarah described it in the event tonight as the whole kind of training montage and i loved all of those scenes i loved the whole valkyrie plot line how you know nesta just basically reforged this like ancient um, army of like powerful warrior women like I loved that whole section I love that Gwyn and Emery and Nesta are just like these best friends and sisters and when the scene with the bracelets when she realized that she'd managed to like make a tracking kind of beacon out of the bracelets I was like my heart couldn't take it honestly um I also want to talk about how Nesta had made a friend in the House of Wind for herself. Like, oh my God, just the, I like want to meet the House of Wind. Who knew a house could be that iconic? Fucking dropping romance books on her like bedside table. Oh God, I literally can't. In that whole scene at the winter solstice, 
when it kind of unveiled its darkness to her I was a mess yeah I'm so emotional by this book but also I'm pleased that it wasn't as heart rendering as A Court of Wings and Ruin in the sense of nobody almost died well apart from Feyre and Reese and the baby but apart from that nobody did die and that was quite nice like it was such a happy ending I thought the ending was absolutely beautiful especially because it felt very like 360 like that Nessa had gone full circle in terms of like even in the opening chapters and stuff it was really her father's death that had basically brought all this trauma on well maybe it was the catalyst for all the trauma and then the final scene you know her at her father's grave and with her sisters no less and just how like kind of just poetic that whole scene is I was just really really impressed with and I thought that was a beautiful place to leave off Nesta's book because like yes she has Cassian and their mating bond and everything like that is so great but it kind of like is just such a kind of beautiful symmetry to you know like the original trilogy and how throughout it all it is like these three sisters so I really loved that touch um oh yeah and I was going to talk about Feyre's baby completely forgot to mention that side of things but we obviously knew this was going to happen because the bone carver in A Court of Wings and Ruin predicted this and basically told Feyre she was going to have a son just didn't expect it to be an Illyrian born son so it has wings of all things and the comment about the um the what the healer said about like oh you can tell it's already got um oh, what did they say oh when the healer says you know you've definitely developed an Illyrian's anatomy I was literally like are you kidding me like how many more times can Sarah J Maas drop that in about the whole wingspan situation um I just found that really really funny and yeah Nyx interesting name I like it I think it's a bit on the nose <laughs> that's my only like comment about um favorite and Reese's baby name um but it's really really cute I just love the idea that they kind of have their like little family unit and quite interesting that Feyre not Feyre that Nesta basically asked the mother when the mother basically took her power to heal Feyre about how she altered her own body to make herself be able to like carry children as well I thought that was a bit like um what's the word just uh convenient I was like well we know what's going to happen in future books then um but all in all this book broke me in every possible way I loved it so much I genuinely thought perhaps one of the most well-written Sarah J Maas books ever and Nesta will go down as one of my favorite characters ever I loved her so so much so guys that is it for this video it has been an emotional roller coaster of a reading vlog but thank you so so much for watching this if you've managed to watch this to the end then thank you so so much for watching and um please do leave a comment telling me what you thought of the court silver flames obviously no spoilers this is a spoiler free zone apart from that spoiler section just gone um but I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I did I yeah I'm in love I'm so in love thank you again for watching and I'll see you very soon bye